So as you can see, we've moved on now to this very nice plant. It's very green, it's very nice. As you can see, the foliage is absolutely perfect. Now the thing is, when you're looking after plants in the garden, you've got to look after them in specific ways. You see, this one ain't grown too well because of the way it's being looked after. You see, it gets bent, it's terrible. Now the way to look after these plants is to murder them because they shouldn't be growing in my damn garden! And that's how you look after plants in a garden when you're a madman. Oh, it's Sunday morning and I was supposed to go watch the football the other day, but I couldn't because work got crap. So instead, let's look at a camera. Yay! Delayed reactions. Polaroid cameras were all a thing in the 80s and 90s for some reason, that most likely being that you could print the photos immediately. You didn't have to send them off to be uh, processed. Now, for anybody born before, let's say, 2000, um, you used to have the 35mm roll films, which you'd have to send off to be processed, which would take a day or two to sort out. Polaroids printed things instantly, so they were a big, big thing. They were also very, very expensive. Especially the film. Oh, God, the film. So I decided that since I'm getting into old cameras, mostly VCR-type cameras, more so than photography, that this seemed like a very good thing to buy, and I'm kind of regretting my life choices for reasons I'll go into later. But yes, we have a Polaroid Supercolor 365 camera, including free film and case. Special boots offer. And there it is. It's a camera. And there it is. It's a camera. And there it is. It's a camera. And there it is, it's a camera. And there it is, it's some kids holding Polaroid photos in terrible lighting because I really need to change the way the setup's going. And there's the uh, instruction menu. But yeah, now this is a special offer put on by Boots, so I will just do that and dump it all straight out. And I didn't actually mean to throw that box all the way over there. Use this cardboard. Carry case, which is just a carry case. Right, let's put that over there. Let's have a quick look at the documentation. Uh, this is a very faded receipt but we should be able to see a date on there if I can focus this. No, it's not going to show, but maybe I can find it on here. Boots the Chemist of uh, Leamington Spa. Oh, I see. I'm going to pull this to my face and see if I can read it. 16th of the 7th, 1986. So this camera was originally brought in 1986, according to this receipt. Uh, Polaroid. Looks like, yes, yeah, standard warranty card. These used to be really, really popular. I don't think anybody in the universe ever filled one of those out what's this ah certification of purchase polaroid 365 camera 16th of the 7th 86 yeah these um certificates of purchases are quite common uh, from this time period. So my typewriter has one from 1926, which I find hilarious. doesn't say who purchased it. No idea of the customer, just who it was. And it's the chemist, Boots the Chemist, Leamington Spa. Mmm. Spa. All products sold in our stores are subject to very careful quality assurance. Woo! Nobody cares! <laughs> And instruction manuals, which we're not going to look through because, let's be fair, who wants to read in a YouTube video? Now, there is the camera. You've got a photo of some old dudes fishing. Is he wearing a bow tie? It looks like he's wearing a bow tie when fishing. A church without any pigeons, so it's shit. A kid clinging on for dear life above the ocean itself, surrounded by sharks. And the camera attempting to blind you, because this is what the men in black used to use. Mm, we get to look at this in a minute. And some writing on the bottom. Made in the United Kingdom by Fabrica Royal Lumbar Polaroid, UK Limited. So, I'm not going to attempt to read any more of that, because I just butchered it. Butchered it? Butchered it. So, ooh. Yeah, I, have, I haven't looked at the camera, and the worst thing is I haven't actually tested if it works or not. Uh, which is the worst thing. But... First off, looking at it, most pretty much all Polaroids seem to have this look straight away. They're all pretty much exactly the same design, which is fine. It's got two LEDs on the top, a green and a red, which you can see in the terrible light. Supercolor 635. Uh, got the supercolor thing. I think that's the, um, the firing mechanism, which you can't use at the moment because it's locked up. Uh, if we pull this up, then we can activate the firing, the firing mechanism, the trigger. Here is the actual camera itself. Hmm, very nice. 
We've got this. I don't know what this does. I could read the instruction manual, but I'm not going to. LM program. Yes. The viewfinder, the actual photography bit, the uh, flash, Polaroid. It's quite a chunky piece of kit, to be fair. I said Polaroids are chunky pieces of kit. They all seem to have it. Now, if you, uh, I think it's this switch down here, push it forward, you can then open this up where the Polaroid 600 film goes in. And what I didn't know originally about Polaroids is the film canister also contains the um, battery, which... That uh, means I passed on a lot of Polaroid cameras because I thought they didn't have batteries and I didn't realise that the uh, film had the batteries. Talking about film, you can still buy it. This is some um, new film. Eight colour instant photos for vintage Polaroid cameras. This is made by a company. Uh, there we go, Vintage Polaroid 600. That's the one that we're using. Um, I can't remember who makes it. All I know is that this whole kit cost me £15 and this cost me £18. £18 for eight photos. That's very, very expensive. Although that's not only because of the film, it's because they have to be specially made. Because, uh, I don't really want to get it out of the foil without actually using it. Ah, hello. Oh, buggery doodahs, let's just get it out and have a look. Ah. Uh, each one has to be specially made with a container, including a battery. Because the battery powers the thing, it smells... Right, so there are the battery contacts immediately. Uh, and I assume the photo lens is in there. When life gives you lemons. Inside this film up, do not remove this dark side. So don't remove this. That must be for pulling it out. So that slides oh, into the bottom of the Polaroid as thus. And it powers it and does everything it needs to. And that does... Yeah, that fits fine. Now... The thing is, my house is a bit naff, and as these Polaroids are very, very expensive... So instead I decided to come here. This is the Colville Nature Walk, somewhere near Lidl, a bit hidden away. To people who don't know about it, but there's quite a few dog walkers, so if I suddenly go sort of, hmm, it means there's a dog walker. But I figured coming outside to a nice nature reserve, and there's some ducks down there, would be a good place to take some photographs to see how effective this camera is. Also, my headphones ran out of battery on the way here because I forgot to charge them because I am an idiot. So, let's open the camera up. We're going to put the, uh, the film into it. I've not done this before. I don't even know if this camera works. This is going to be an incredible letdown if this doesn't work, but to be fair, we have seen that before. So we put it in this way, as thus. Shot it. Ah. Oh, there you go, and it's... Uh, spat out the top cover, so now we can't take it out. It's in there for good. The camera is on, there is a green light there. I don't know if you can see it, it is turned on, but it does appear to be working. So, and I've got a counter that says 10 here. I don't think I've got 10, but I've got a counter. Now the ducks have gone away, so uh, let's see if I can lure them in somehow. Let's try and get a photo of the ducks. Oi. Oi. There we go, and there they're coming. So I'm going to line up my Viewfinder. And there it comes. Out it's come. Uh, I don't know which side it actually develops. I believe it's this side. But this should now take 10 minutes to develop. And we will see if it uh, develops properly. Um, shake it like a Polaroid with a song. I'm not sure if you're supposed to shake it, but we will for good measure. And hopefully we'll have a lovely photo of some ducks. And if we don't, well, this camera was a complete waste of money. Now, if I shut the lid, the light turns off. So that's how you conserve the battery power. Apparently the battery isn't too bad in these new ones compared to the old ones, which used to run out. They'd have just enough for the eight photographs, and then that was it. These ones apparently carry on for a bit longer. Uh, yeah, it looks... Something is beginning to develop. Um, I'm going to hold that there. No, I'm not. Let's pause the video and come back to this. So we're about eight minutes in, and this is what it currently looks like. I honestly don't know if you can see any detail because I can't see through the viewfinder. It's very non-noticeable, but you can see the two ducks there, and the rest of it just hasn't formed yet. So we're going to give it a bit longer and see what happens. And I think what will happen is I'll take the rest of the photos off camera and take them straight home once we're done.
so we're about 15 minutes in at the moment, 10-15 minutes, had a couple of conversations with the people that have come by, taken a couple more photos. They're all in various stages of development and I'm not convinced that the camera itself is good. But, you know, time will tell. So here's our initial photo. I don't know if you can see that, but it's starting to form. The colours are obviously very browned. I don't know why that is, but they are. You can definitely see the two dots so you can see what it's made out of. Uh, the next one I took was this which hasn't come out particularly well either, although it's about the same level of development. Uh, the thing running away is a young, it's a coot or a moorhound. I can never remember if coots had the red or the white top, but it's a young one of them. In fact, you might be able to hear them in the background at the moment. There's quite a few over there um, because I like birds. And the third one was this one, which has an interesting uh, developmental problem at the bottom. Don't entirely know. Uh, where it's a pair of loads of ducks being fed as some people came by and fed the ducks, so I decided to take advantage. So. I've taken three different photographs of birds. This one's been shaken, so it's quite far developed. These two, not so. I don't know if you're supposed to shake Polaroids when you uh, do them. I suppose I should have read the instructions. So, as I'm a little fed up of standing around here not doing anything when I could be playing World of Warcraft Classic. Thanks, Blizzard. Uh, I'm going to move on and take some other photos around here with a couple of little things that I brought. And just in general, I've got five photos left. Let's make them good ones and we'll probably save one. In fact, I'll do one in front of the camera so you can see the process of it coming out because it confused me when it first came out. So I'm going to put these three in my bag. I'm going to shake all the Polaroids that I take from this point onwards. I'm going to see what happens when I get home. Yay! And technology, wonderful. <laughs> the last photo should be taken on the way out. Now I'm going to try and spin the camera around as quick as I can so you can see the film coming out. So I'm actually going to literally find the viewfinder and put this so we can get an actual comparison as well. So yeah this is not going to work is it? That's not going to work unfortunately as much as I want it to. So either way I'm going to um, try and take as close a photograph as possible to what we see here so we can compare the actual two. So, click, flash, and it comes out like that and gets covered up by a protection shield. Which has, um, is the way to do things. As I said, I have technically done this wrong and I expect the first four photos not to come through in any way, shape or form. But if I'm correct in thinking, that's all of them. That's all the photos. Um, pretty sure that's eight. I've got mud on the front of this now. I'm actually just going to pull them out and have a quick nosey because if there's one more we'll take it home for good measure and, I don't know, take a photo of Pidge. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that's all eight. All eight photographs are in here, being protected from the light. I will not look at them until I get home, which also means that we can uh, be a silly bug. We've still got battery power, so you know. Hello, I'm a photographer, my father. Takes a photo, nothing comes out. And again, for good measure, click, light, noise, no film. Now, allegedly, if you pick up the old film, you can uh, put it back inside these containers. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that. In fact, we're actually going to... Uh, I'm actually going to take it out. So now I've opened it up, it would just be a case of yanking it out like this. And it's out. And as you can see, that's why it's so expensive. It's got this mechanism that pushes it up, which I assume is spring-loaded. No, it's just a piece of bent metal and the film itself plus a battery in there. That is not damn cheap, I tell you. 18 pounds for that, for eight photos. So if it's a hobby you're gonna get into, it's gonna be an expensive one regardless, but let's go home. Well then, we actually went out and did something. And now we can return to the awful lighting of inside my house. Seriously, I'm thinking of changing where I'm doing my videos because that window completely screws with the lighting. I've got the main light on at the moment. It's just got this horrible yellow tint. I'm not happy with it, but we'll cover that in the future. You know, I'm thinking about what can be done. And we have Polaroids in here. Now, I haven't looked at any of these, and I don't know what order they're in. They're not going to be in the correct order that they were taken, which is a bit of a shame, but so be it. Here's the cover, incidentally. When life gives you lemons... Do not remove this dark slide. Mmm. There you go. Polaroid Originals. They're the ones that make the film. This isn't sponsored. It's a hell of a lot of money. But let's have a look at these Polaroids. Now, we're expecting the ones with the docks to be absolutely screwed because of the lighting. Uh, me not realising that A, you don't shake them, and B, you hide them from the light. Took three photographs to figure that out, but now we know it. The other photos should be okay. So, first photo. This is the one that was taken at the tree line. As you can see, it's not come out very well. Um, obviously, the flash has caught this tree, which is very much lit up, and it's darkened the rest of it. I don't think you can turn the flash off, which is a bit of a shame. It's a very dark photograph. Uh, the film is very reflective, so you can't really see, but you can see the railway line, so it's something. Um, I must have moved as well. I think I've moved too early in all of them because you can see this blurring at the top. Not fantastic, but hey-ho, let's pull one from the bottom. Here's the lorry. Uh, that's very saturated. I mean, it's come out without a blur, so the camera's done quite well in taking the photo of a fast-moving vehicle. Uh, I obviously clicked it a bit too early. This is just an experience on my half. But it's very saturated. Uh, you know, the, the greens haven't come out particularly well in this one. I don't know if that's because of the light itself. The flash did go off, or if that's just the way it's been done. Again, not ideal, but it is a photograph, and you can make out that it's a DAF. Uh, it's uh, probably going to Barden Industrial Estate, Barden Quarry, because they're quite common. Right, let's pull this one out now. Yes, here we go. This is the docks. As you can see, this is what happens when you expose it to light. It's very, very brown. Obviously, exposing it to light is what's um, causing this brown, because that would have been exposed to light quite quickly as well. It's not good. Uh, in fact, this is something that I will need to work on when working on this camera. And considering how expensive the bloody film is, that's not good. Each one of these photos is about 250 I um, mean, you can make the ducks out. Uh, there's damage on the bottom there. That actually came like that out of the camera, so I don't know what that is. That's far from ideal. Oh, these are a bit disappointing, aren't they? Although we were expecting that one to be bad. Will we have at least one good photo? Well, it's not going to be this one. There is a very young coot there and another more hen there. And there appears to be something up there, but I can't make out what it is. Again, this is one that was exposed to light too much. Ah, I read that they bubble up if you shake them. And right there, you can't quite make it out. Let me see if I can focus on it. Right there is a bubble. So that's what happens when you shake them. Do not shake your Polaroids, lovely people. Mm, I'm not very good at this. Oh, well. Ah, and here's the last one. I wanted to cover these three first because we knew these would be buggered. Um, the two ducks. This was the very first photograph I took. Again, exposure to light has caused it to come out like this. Might not be a problem if you use black and white film. I haven't got black and white film, though. I've only got colour film. Definitely not how it's supposed to look, though. Yay. Very yellow, very naff on the back. Uh, what's this? Can you... Uh, I thought there might be like a sticker or something you could peel off to stick it to things. Hmm. Yes. I mean, I like my old technology. I've, trust me, I've got other things as well. But what about this one? 
Oh dear, that did not focus. So that was the two um, Range Rovers. Now I noticed on another Polaroid I was looking at, it had a macro feature for taking close-up photographs. This one does not appear to have a macro feature. The one I was looking at was a new one. This is from the 80s. That one was from the 90s, judging by the coloring. And it did have a macro filter, which is basically just a thing that came in from. Didn't buy that one. Probably should have, but didn't. Bit of a disappointment, though. You know, I was hoping that it would take photos up close, and it sort of failed in that regard. Although, again, we can put that down to my experience with handling the camera. We're not doing very well with these. What about this one? Oh, no, it's another one. So this is the one that we took uh, by the tree, of the mini Riptide in the tree. Um, yeah, it's not come out well, that's it. Uh, I mean, you can see the branch out, it's very, very dark. This developed almost immediately, I saw as I was putting it in the bag, the actual white bin. Again, it's just not focused it, the flash has gone off. I don't know if there's a way to turn the flash off. Um, yeah, these ain't not come out too well, have they? I don't even know what this does. I think that's light and dark. Yeah, it's a slider. I don't know what it does. But yep, that's not come out well at all. Are we going to get at least one photo that's passable? The best photo so far is this one of the Bally Lorry. That's the best photo so far. This does not take photos up close good. How many have we got? This is the last one. Last one. This is the Lavender. Okay, that's not terrible. It's ting. Thanks, Facebook. Oh, I've been mentioned in Spotted. Oh, dear. That could be bad. Somebody's seen what's going on. So... This is the lavender. I think it was lavender anyway. And reeds by the waterside. This one, it's not bad. You can see it's green and the yellow. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a camera from the 80s. It's not going to be ideal. It could do better. There, are, I saw on Twitter not long ago, somebody took a photograph using a camera that was over 100 years old. And uh, it came out better than this camera. <sighs> Don't really know what to say about that. These two are the ones that have come out the best. And they're both oversaturated. So they both had too much exposure too light without a shadow of a doubt the problem with this 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 hobby is it's so expensive like if it was four or five pounds for a film i wouldn't have a problem but it's three times that plus shipping which means that learning how to take photos is an incredibly expensive hobby that truthfully i can't afford for example i've got a, a jcv cr-2 yes uh, i'm getting more notifications thanks facebook which is an old camcorder from the same time 1985 ish and that cost me 30 pounds cheaper than it should have been they're normally about 100 but i brought it off facebook for 100 pounds uh, 30 pounds this film a 16 photos will cost me the same as that camera and i brought that camera and some videotapes and everything and i can get a hell of a lot more work out of it and yes we are going to be looking at it because i want to cover old vcrs um but yeah now we've got two decent photos and a bunch of photos that haven't come out so well this one's Mm, that one's a bit pass, you know, three are passable. That's the best colored one, really, because of the way the flash has gone off. So we've got three photos and the rest are a waste. Um, well, there you go. Polaroid cameras. They still exist. They actually make new ones as well. The company that does Polaroid Original makes new ones. I don't know if they're uh, any better than the old one. They probably are. Uh, uh, this is an old camera, so you can't expect it to be perfect in any way, shape, or form. But looking at it, that's very, very disappointing, uh, the way it's come out. And whether I buy more film and do more photos, I don't know. Regardless, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like this content. I said we're looking at slightly different things again rather than toy cars. Um, we do have a couple of old camcorders to look over because I said I'm getting into that sort of photography and video making. Uh, so we will be looking at those at some point on the channel. And we obviously have some things to go out and do, you know, going to weird places, opening stupid things. But yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I might leave one of these in the sun for a bit and see if it affects the way it develops. I mean, those would have been all right if they'd just bloody focused. Oh, well. Bye, everybody. Time to go and see what people are saying about me on Facebook.